much money is the NFL losing because COVID-19? Well, let's jump in. Welcome back to another episode of The Money Show. Today we're going to break down the numbers of how much money the NFL is losing due to COVID-19. As I talked about last episode, we talked about how much money the NBA was losing, but they were still able to come up with a solution and able to finish the season. So let's see what the NFL is doing. Unlike most professional sports, the NFL was lucky to have COVID hit during their off season. This gave them time to plan and develop protocols for the COVID-19 virus. The NFL canceled its preseason at the request of the NFL Players Association so the two sides could implement an extended training camp schedule. Because all off-season team activities played out virtually in the spring and early summer, players needed additional on-field work to get into football shape ahead of full contact practices. As far as the regular season goes, the NFL was still set to play all original 256 games scheduled. The only difference was the NFL allowed each of its 32 teams and those organizations' local officials to make the call on whether to let fans attend their pro football games amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. So being from Ohio, I only have like really two teams that I'm to pick from on this whole NFL thing. I'm a huge Bengals fan. Joe Burrow has my heart. I want to go to a game this year, but the first game they weren't allowed to have anybody at, like fan-wise. I'm hoping they release the restrictions, but I don't think they're going to. So my dream of going and watching my honey Joe Burrow play this year is crushed and my heart's literally breaking. Since the decision of fans or no fans came down to local officials and public health experts, many NFL teams allowed season ticket holders and a small percentage of fans to enter the games. For example, the first game took place on September 10th between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Houston Texans. The Chiefs reduced the capacity of fans to approximately 22% to kick off the 2020 season. As the capacity varied from team to team, some teams allowed even an even higher percentage, such as the Jacksonville Jaguars allowing 25% capacity in their stadium, while many others, such as the Las Vegas Raiders and the Los Angeles Chargers, allowed no fans for now. As the season went on, these limitations of the number of fans were subject to change based on the pandemic's impact on both the NFL and the United States. So now, let's get back to the money aspect. How much money is the NFL losing, and are they going to fix it, or how are they going to fix it? So in order to understand what they're losing, we need to realize how they make their money. The NFL's revenue can be separated in between two different things, national revenue and local revenue. National revenue consists of TV deals along with merchandising and licensing deals. This money is then divided evenly between 32 teams regardless of the individual team's performance. According to the 2018 annual report, the NFL earned over $8.1 billion in national revenue last year, meaning each team received about $255 million in national revenue from the league. Local revenue, which consists of ticket sales, concessions, and corporate sponsors, is earned by the teams themselves. In 2018, the Green Bay Packers earned $196 million in local revenue. That equaled 43% of their total revenue that year, which was $455 million. Since football is hands down the most viewed sport in the U.S., the NFL makes the majority of its income from its massive TV deals. They currently have TV deals with CBS, NBC, Fox, and ESPN. In contracts that were filed in 2011, CBS, NBC, and Fox committed to paying the NFL a total of $39.6 billion between the years of 2014 and 2022 seasons. The three broadcasters share the rights to Sunday Night Football as well as annually rotating rights to the Super Bowl. Fees paid by these networks are set to rise about 7% annually, meaning they will each be paying the NFL about $3.1 billion per year by 2022. In that same year, ESPN signed a deal to pay the NFL $15.2 billion through the year 2021 for the right to Monday Night Football. For the executive rights to Thursday Night Football, Fox signed an additional deal for $3.3 billion outbidding NBC and CBS. Although the NFL generates the majority of its income through these massive TV deals, its other sources of income include merchandising and licensing deals, ticket sales and concessions, and corporate sponsorships. The stream of income that COVID-19 had the biggest impact on was obviously ticket sales. As we said earlier, a lot of NFL teams are allowing no fans to watch the games. On the other hand, some are allowing as high as 25% capacity to their stadiums. 
Although this has a small impact on the total revenue of the NFL as a whole, it does affect teams on a smaller, more local scale. In 2016, an average NFL team earned roughly $7 million in ticket sales from one single event. About 55% of that revenue was used to paid athletes or musicians. 10% goes to general stadium administration, 5% goes to team's coaching staff, 5% is paid in taxes, and the remaining 8% are profit. That 8% profit contributes only about 3 to $5 million to the average NFL team's revenue. So just like the NBA, the NFL makes a lot of money from broadcasting and sponsorship deals. Just imagine how much they make during the Super Bowl and how much they spend on all the advertising. It is insane. So in an apples to apple comparison, the NBA has about 15 people per roster. The NFL team has about 53 people per roster. So for the fact that the NFL team is almost four times the size of an NBA team, it makes it so much harder to make sure all the players are safe, they're doing way more tests, and it's gonna cost way more money. With safety being the number one priority, the NFL is taking some crazy measures. They are, gonna, they are roughly estimated to be about 75 million in testing. I even heard they're wearing these weird wristband things that when you're not playing, if you get too close to somebody else, it beeps. They're taking extreme measures, guys. So in addition to this, they're also spending a lot of money on cleaning supplies to make sure everything's cleaned. They're renovating lockers to move them farther apart. And they're also making some of their weight rooms outside. So they are taking so many measures to make sure everybody's safe. But imagine the amount of money being spent on all of this. Experts say, Regular and aggressive testing will be critical to allow the league to have a chance to play all 256 regular season games along with the 13 postseason games. Bioreference laboratories will be charging a flat fee covering up to 120 tests per team per day with extra tests available at $125 each. The NFL teams will pay 1 32nd of the total fee and they will individually pay for any extra tests that they require. Although the NFL has done a great job eliminating the spread of the virus, just recently in the fourth week of the NFL season, the Chiefs-Patriots game was postponed due to Cam Newton testing positive. As of October 7th, 14 players have tested positive for COVID-19. Of those 14 players, nine are from the Tennessee Titans. As the NFL league progresses, the main mentality of players, coaches, officials, league administrators, and team owners has been to take it day by day. By following guidelines and limiting the spread, the NFL will most likely be able to complete their full season. One frightening case scenario that has arisen, but has not been resolved yet, is what will happen if the NFL is unable to complete its season. Although no public statements or conclusions have been made, it is very likely that most NFL players will not be paid their full 2020 salary if they are not able to play the full 20. 20 season due to COVID-19. If they aren't able to play their regular season and their postseason in 2020, it's going to hurt them for many years to come. The four networks that broadcast the NFL, which include CBS, ESPN, Fox, and NBC, all declined to comment their contingency plans and thoughts about the 2020 season. The NFL, accounting for the top 41 of the top 50 rated telecasts of any kind in 2019, would be irreplaceable. When looking at the total ad revenue these news networks generate through the NFL regular season, the college football regular season, and college football postseason, it's amazing to see how much they rely on both the NFL and college football. When looking at the total revenue of these news networks, the NFL generates a high percentage of it. The NFL accounts for 39% of Fox's income, 17% of ESPN's, 24% of CBS's, and 21% of NBC's. If the NFL were unable to complete its 2020 season, these news networks would be much more likely to bid higher on TV deals because they are that reliant on the NFL. The NFL always wants to keep the audience entertained because they make most of their money off the broadcasting deals and the sponsorship deals. I hope I was able to help you guys learn about the financial impact of the NFL with COVID. Make sure you tackle that subscribe button so you can keep up with us. And make sure you comment below and let us know what you thought. I love to see what you guys have to say. And keep tuned so we can help you get your money right. Well, let's jump in. That Jesus Christ. That was so stupid. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.